Welcome along to Under Construction. I'm Donico Callan, and I am delighted to welcome you back for a new season of our Under Construction podcast. A little later in the podcast, we are going to be with our suppliers corner, and that's Crown Paints today. But we are in the presence of greatness. Limerick is famous for producing some of our finest actors, some of our greatest musicians, the odd decent rugby player, but nothing has lifted the parish, the county, like it's hurlers. And we're delighted to be joined by Trevon today. Tom, Seamus and Shane, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, Tom, I'll come to you first. Um, seeing you outside, still churning away uh, with your prep and stuff like that. Is there any bit of enjoyment for you? Of course, four in a row now at the moment, but it's still shoulder to wheel in, in terms of preparation. Yeah, no. Um, you know, it's that time of year again, as you say, where we're getting back into it. But um, yeah, look, we got to enjoy the off season. Um, had a plenty of downtime and enjoyed that. And, you know, it only reinvigorates you to, to want to go again. Um, so yeah, that enjoyment is definitely there and really, really looking forward to the year ahead. Seamus, we were laughing at it though. You don't miss it, do you? That, that moment of constantly being on. Yeah, listen, while Tom was eating oats, I was eating pastries. So like, that's, <laughs> that's the way it was. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. The way, that's the way it is. Like, like the, 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 you'll always miss and then, then fellas will step away and you know yourself. The, the dressing room is the thing you miss the most. The lads is the, the, lads is the number one thing that, that, that I hated to let go of. But flip it, you, being at home on a Tuesday evening and having nowhere to go was yeah. grand. It was actually <laughs> yeah. lovely. Exactly. It was like, I was twiddling my, what do I do with myself? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Love Island. There's, yeah, <laughs> there's, there's, the, the rosary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But it was great crack. No, yeah. so like it's, it, you, you, you give up something, you get something else. Yeah. It's, uh, but uh, you know, it's you know, I, 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 I'm, I have a different vantage point now, and I love, I love watching this man do what he does. Are you at that point with it, Seamus? Because just for myself personally, I was a bit. Um, I, I I struggled for a while the first two years because you kind of still think I could be out there. You see an awful lot of your lads out there, a bit envious. I was there. I was there quick. Gee, yeah. like I was there quick after the All Ireland eighteen. I trained like a demon for two weeks after the All Ireland eighteen. I was like, I'm going to make my place back on that team, yeah. and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be ready for this. And I I was actually in great shape October twenty eighteen, and then I realized no, it's time to go. Like I'd my yeah. twin, I had twins born in twenty eighteen. I had three kids. Uh, you know, a job, I think, and a lot of things going on yeah. that, that needed me more than than the Dimmer Hurling team. So, uh, no, I moved on real quick because my need was my need. I wasn't providing like yeah. you were. Um, it was it was a passion that I was feeding, and it just the time ran out on that for me. So, like, yeah. I I moved on very quick. My I took my daughter to the Munster final the following year, and it was flipping. You know. Wow. The, it was it was quids in like I was I, I, it was a different vantage point different experience loved it yeah Shane you're um, out but still in m managing and coaching you're with the minors is that right and still doing a bit with the punditry so how are you um, transitioning away from the game yeah probably probably a small bit harder for me in the sense that <clears throat> like Seamus went out in his own terms I didn't do you know yeah. and uh, you know I was only still 27 so I would have maybe thought it had, had a bit more left to give but the only thing I'd say and what made it easier for me is that you know, growing up in Limerick, you don't dream of winning three, four, and hopefully five All Irelands or so, or whatever it's going to be. Like I dreamed of winning one, yeah. and that dream became a reality, which I didn't ever think was going to happen. And especially when we started, you know, when I joined with Seamus in twenty what, 2012 and so on, was like you were maybe didn't get out of Munster, be knocked out in qualifiers. So you know what it is and and was you know hard. Uh, what made it easier for me is that you know I never, I never, I once I never wanted to win you know numerous All Irelands. I was just living in an era now, or um, I was living in an era where if you got one, you take your hand off. Uh, and even the, the kids now, like if you look at a five year old kid now, they don't know no different than Limerick winning. So now they're going up and they're saying, well, they want to get four or five. It's just it depends what what era you kind of grow up in. And yeah, listen, and and the other side of it too is getting into the media work, obviously, and doing the you know doing the, the piece with RT. You know, I do enjoy it, um, but conscious that I'm still you know some of my best friends on the panel as well so it's only suppose when 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 they move on uh, it might become you know I, I'm conscious I suppose what I say but you still have a job to do as well Yeah agreed how do you manage that though we might chat about it because I've put something in place for me that I just think a bit helpful I would say nothing on TV that I wouldn't say in a dressing room or in a review meeting you know what I mean I, I, I'd need to be able to stand over it and I'd need to know that yeah I'd be okay with saying that to Tom because I'd say it directly to his eyes well, I think once you're factual, nobody can disagree with you. You know, sometimes you might be opinionated on something and it's your opinion versus my opinion. But if you're dealing with something and it's factual, well, then no one can disagree with you. And at the end of the day, let's call a spade a spade. If you're getting paid to do something, you've got to do 
you got to do a right job or a proper job and whatever consequences that has you have you just have to deal with it and that's people might be afraid to say it like you know you're getting paid from Marty you're getting paid from different pieces you have to do your job and I have to do my job as well it's what's put bread on the table so um, but I listen I'd like to think that I am fair no no, no different to what probably most people think the one thing that annoys me a lot I suppose is um, and they're, they're out there you know people probably know a few of them is the, is the lads that are controversial for the sake of it yeah. uh, I'm not one of them I'll yeah. just call it as I see when, it when you think me. your opinion like when you think there's there's more weight in your opinion there is that's the trap like yeah. I think that's when you're you're given a, when you're given a mic, right? Uh, in any which walk of life, I agree with Shane. Like once, once you're given an opinion that you fully believe in for the sake of it's, I, I always stick to gameplay. I'm, I'm, I love analysis. I love yeah. actually anal- analyzing the game, how they did what they did, why they did what they did. Yeah, the shortcomings are there. Cool, Grant, fine. But like that's what I'm interested in. Like yeah. for, for the, I, I think that's the trap. If you don't fall into the trap of thinking that your opinion is far more important than it is, I think yeah, you're of fine. course. But I can see both sides of it now because when you sit down and you haven't, especially in your game, lads, like honestly, trying to understand the minutia of it, like rugby, everyone says it's really confusing. But in the end, it's just thirty. That's because you were professional for yeah, yeah, of course. Years. But, like yeah. I have no idea what's going on, and the, the big thing in your game at the moment, Jim, is, is the manipulation of space, isn't yeah. it? It, it? Like so, like this is the king here. Like so, like I. We were talking real, just earlier on, really, about I, I get excited when I see space because, yeah. like, because I know something's going to happen. Mm. Like, and I love that because I'm I'm now from a vantage point where I'm like that space didn't just appear. Something happened to create the space. Someone has done something. So when back in when I started it was 06, right? Um, space didn't exist. You played the you played the the five lines in the field, and you gave it hell. Yeah. Uh, but Henry Shefflin, you wonder. And he's drift. And he basically said, listen, someone's going to follow me and then there's going to be space. And if they don't follow me, I can get in the ball. Yeah. And that and that, that was kind of, it, people were like, oh, I can't put my finger on what Henry's doing. He's wandering. That's, he's, yeah. just, he's, going for a, he's going for a walk. Like, yeah. That's exactly what he was doing. It was as simple as that. But I used to get excited about that when I see, oh no, Martin Comfort is in that space and he's going to destroy whoever he's on. But I love watching sport like that and then hearing your insight to it because there's always a selfless player, isn't there? There's always someone that he doesn't get any attention. You know, I just go back yeah. to our kind of monster days and you'd look at someone like Jerry Flannery or but everyone would want to chat about key marquee players. But you're there, look at how small he makes the pitch for yeah. everyone else. I think yeah. ex- externally, externally then players mightn't get enough credit but I know internally yeah. where, is, where it matters most are there the most amount of weight is, uh, is, is probably put on them players and it's the most amount of gratitude that's given to that player and themselves as players as I said internally are the players that, uh, that, that that's, that's why they're there. They're, they're very important people in the dressing room. Yeah. Tom, it's amazing to hear Shane saying something like that. You know, to win one All-Ireland is the goal. And here you are, you know what I mean, four in a row going into another season. The mind shift change in that for you to kind of think, no, this is, we're going to make a dynasty here. You know what I mean? We're going to be remembered forever for, or do you break it down even smaller than that? What goes before? Do you carry a witchy or do you... To be honest, you're, you're not really thinking that way at all. Um, as I said, you're kind of thinking it a year ahead. Um, like it's that time to get going again and you, you're starting at base again. That's the way I'd view it and I know it's the way the lads would view it as well. You know, and it's just going out each day, you know, to get better. Um, and when you reach that level, you want to get better again. And it's just, I suppose, that constant hunger that, you know, that better is temporary and you just want to keep on improving. You have to view it as a, a level playing field again, like, you know, Munster, we like, it was last day the, in the round robin yeah. series we got out of Munster um, this year do you know um, so but just on that Tom it, like something comes out of the ground then in those moments it, like you, we'll call it experience there's an X factor to it as well but there's that ability of knowing you've done it and never you, like in the pressure moments you know that you can call on something because you've done it before yeah, no, and it's definitely good to, you know, have, I suppose, it, those experiences behind you and things like that. But at the same time, there is going to be a day where it doesn't go your way. You know, we all thought that with the, you know, the Dublin football team, which is the greatest probably team in the GA has ever seen, you know, and it's like, when will they be stopped? But like, it only takes one day and that day comes and it all, and, and you know, it's gone then. So you really do like have to just enjoy it while it's going on. But you know, you got to work hard in the moment and, you know, it's another year ahead that's going to be a tough year. 
but we just have to make sure that we're ready for it. I think what Limerick are very good at too, Dunica, is that, um, like, you know, there's going to be much talk, you know, as, as there's a lot already and we're only in January about five mm. in a row, you know, yeah. and we were just p- talking, you know, before about it and the one thing Limerick and maybe I want to Limerick that John and his management team are really, really good at because it was there when I was there as well is they don't run away from this, what's in front of your face. So they will say, yeah, this is the year for five in a row. Absolutely. If we win this, it will be five in a row. But what gets us there? Yeah. Right? Is it, will talking about get us there? Absolutely not. And then it's just parked and right. Now we know Now we know what we can do or what we have done. We got to go after that even more. You know, they won't, like you see any interviews that will happen this year, uh, I guarantee you, over, over the months ahead, when five in a row is trying at Tom or trying at John or anybody else, they won't run away from it. It's yeah. there. Everybody knows it's there. And they've just become very, very good at managing the situations that are there. Is it any different to two in a row, three in a row, four in a row? I think if you go back to Kilkenny's time in 2010, where there was whatever, 25,000 people at their last training session before they played Tipperary. Uh, that's not going to happen. So even experience of, 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 of hearing stuff like that in previous times will, will help going forward. But I just think it's, it's, uh, it's very mature, I suppose, out of the group. And, and John would have done that, I said, in my time when we, when we wouldn't have had a whole pile of success. Um, so, yeah, they won't run away from what's in front of them. Seamus, is that a maturity even of the whole game now? I'm, I'm pushing on, like grabbing the nettle a little bit there to kind of go, yeah, we embrace that. You know, it's going to be the greatest challenge ever, but we love it. But this is a wider conversation. Like this is, like you're talking about an Irish psyche, aren't you really? Like when you're mm. talking about the Irish rugby team going to the, the Rugby World Cup as yeah, as front runners, world yeah. number ones. Like, do are we comfortable as, as an Irish people with expectation and with the burden of favouritism? Yeah. Probably not, I would say. Typically, I, I I think though in these moments I think we're getting better. At but it. I I would agree with you. So like in Limerick, it was very much a relishing the underdog. Like mm. in in '07 we got to the All Ireland final as underdogs, and it, we loved it. We loved the role of it. Richie Bennis was our was our manager and a fabulous leader and charismatic and everything. That oh eight was a disaster. Like because we had expectation. So like we th- that is built and that is kind of formed by culture. Mm. Uh, and I would say that's exactly what Shane is talking about yeah. the culture and the leadership in that team is second to none it's fantastic but the the reserves that the lads call on are formed from habit ritual things that are done over and over again that it just becomes second nature and you trust You so you trust the guys around you you trust yourself uh, and you trust the process and yet you acknowledge these are the things ahead of us yeah this, you know, there's an opportunity there for, for history mm. But, you know, the process is more important than the the journey is more important to the destination. And I think when you focus on that, that's how that's that's how greatness and that's how what the great teams do is that this is normal to us. Yeah. And you're right, Shane, it comes from leadership. But just from the kind of the foot soldier side of it, that process, Tom, you might give us an insight into... Like, I don't know how you do it. You know, two chances of getting an insight in the process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind that either. But just, Tom, just give us like a rundown of your week. Like, obviously juggling work as well on top of it and the, the demands on, on you. And, you know, there must be sacrifices. There must be something that does fall short because you have to give your, your the game um, you love so much. Yeah, you do. You used to, I suppose, since a young age, like, you know, you put in a lot of hours um, and then, yeah, as you go on, I suppose playing senior in the county does involve a lot of time. You know, you're out five times a week and um, so there, there is sacrifices, you know, of your time and your commitment towards other things, whether it's, you know, attending things at a weekend or, you know, weddings and things like that that are only natural for a person in their 20s to go to, you know, you have to maybe not go to them or, you know, you're going to them and, and not being able to indulge fully in the day that it is. Um, but to be honest, I had this conversation with a lot of people and like to me, it's not really a sacrifice, you know, with other players and talking to it. You know, this is something that we choose to do and that w- what we've wanted to do. So you just view it as, you know, that's the way you want to live your life. It's not really a sacrifice if you're doing it and enjoying it. Um, I'd be more conscious of the, the sacrifices maybe the people around me um, make, to be honest. You know, my girlfriend, Elaine, like she didn't choose this life for me. Yeah. She would, she, you know, would love to be maybe off traveling. Um, you know, I would like that I'd be able to go to weddings with her. Or, you know, there's a christening at the weekend I won't I won't be going to. Um, you know, it's things like that. And she makes those sacrifices um, a lot of the time, it's, you know, for, for me to chase what I want to chase. And, you know, and it's people around you from a young age, you know, whether it's your, your mother and father hopping into a car to drive you while you didn't realize it at the time, you only realize it as you go on, you know, they sacrifice their time, whether it's, you know, driving me out to Rakhiel to play with Limerick or train with Limerick during the week at 14, 15, you know, and they're sitting in a car for an hour, hour and a half. 
So, you know, things like this could, they didn't know it might happen, but, you know, they were, they were letting you try and see if it did happen. Yeah, I always found that the best bit, though, by winning and leaving them have a moment, leave them enjoy it. You definitely always... feel like you're yeah, giving back to them a small bit, 100 percent. Yeah. And just on that, the other side of it as well, though, I always found they took the criticism and the, the dips a bit deeper than I did or than you probably do. You're hardened, you're around a group. People come at you, you're used to it, but they... Yeah. yeah. Try sitting beside a fella, right, in a stand who has an opinion, right, who has a very strong opinion about your very close, like, so yeah. your your yeah. wife, my wife, sitting in the stands, listening to that fella's useless, that fella, like, take him off. They, they put up with that. Like, so Tom hit the nail on the head. Like, the sacrifice isn't yours. It's... Uh, but like, you know, you get to live a dream, and especially like, so we were talking about in the amateur sport, you know, you, it is a dream. Like it's a, it's a passion you're living. It's not a livelihood um, because you have to choose to do this and you have to, you have to invest to do it. Uh, so, uh, you know, you're the one that live, lives the dream and then the people that are with you, you know, live it vicariously through you. But they're, they're, they're paying for it. Donica, you're talking about the processes of limber curling. Could you give us an insight into the process of water curling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew it would get yeah, to some point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would, yeah, we're on it. No, no, we're all saying nothing, lads. We're all saying nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do find it interesting. I one thing I'll say about being around the water for lads. I cannot believe the commitment levels. People have no idea. They really don't. It, just in terms of, like Tom, I know we're joking about you eating out before it, but like there, the the windows to make sure you're fueled the. The other things that are going on in your life, be it studies, like, uh, lads, I'll be honest with you, being a professional player is so much easier. And I, uh, I, I personally feel that I think the joy is in, I, I, like, I actually think we have to protect hurling and football from it going away from that. Because I was lucky enough to be at the All-Ireland Final against Galway with Limerick won. And I, I can promise you, with the exception maybe of a few games for me, that Munster-Glasgow game the day after Anthony Foley. But you know when you feel something, you feel emotion, you feel an outpouring, there's something that connects between the pitch and, and the supporters. I've never come across anything like it that day with I, the Galway game. Yeah, it was probably because, you know... Um, it was just it was 45 years, wasn't it? You know, yeah. before the last time we won it. And it was amazing. Like, there's one fella in our local club in the Pierce, you know, and he was, yeah, he's from Wexford, you know, and he, he was told to say, you know, before 2018, that he could never hun understand why Limerick uh, was, you know, a hurling county that it was, it was at Limerick and Dublin have the same amount of Ireland, all Ireland That's in the last right. 70 or 80 years, like, you know, <laughs> but yet Limerick is still mad into hurling and Dublin, you know, yeah. are getting there now, obviously, again, to, to use to be football. But um, it was probably got to do with that. It was so long and there was just so much passion for a down there and no matter whatever happens in any sport or whatever you do like if you look at the maybe the the homecomings uh, you know the scenes after you know the second third fourth I know there was COVID running there as well but it's just the first one after so long is always going to be different to any other one I, I, maybe I don't know Tom would you agree with that like, they're all mm. special don't get me wrong but it's just the first one after so long and when you see the supporters and the, the scenes and the carry on afterwards it, they, I don't think they can ever be matched I yeah no I, I agree 100% you know whenever anyone asks like 2018 does stick out um, and it's for those reasons you know there was that outpour of emotion as you say Donica um, and yeah for the, for that reason I think it's, it was unreal um, you know it was the probably, you know, you don't see people crying in the stand any time we win in All-Ireland, you know, the last few years, whether... I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy. <laughs> but yep. 2018, that's that's what it was. And I remember bumping into my parents and an extended family and, you know, there was nearly a tear in my eye whether, yeah. you know, there was, yeah, just yeah, that kind that of dis disbelief. disbelief. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's disbelief that it, that, that, it, that it can, like, it can happen to us. Like, it's that feeling. Like, it was Galway the year before. It was in yeah. 17. It was, for them, it was breaking of, you know, that was, again, that was 20. 20 something years of, of, of hardship or 30 years of hardship mm. for, since, since the 80s and I was actually saying after they I'll never forget and I, 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 met, I, said, I said it to a few people and they agreed with me actually but you know Someone when Joe Canning so <laughs> agreed with me imagine that <laughs> hard, <laughs> uh, in, right. standing up in, when Joe Canning hit the last three yeah. it, it, right we were was it two points or oh, no, only point up one point that was, was the level, yeah, yeah. level and I remember thinking go over or go wide but don't drop into the back of the net and oh, all that could go through my mind was yeah, yeah. 1994 Offly comeback 94, 96 and that had I was one and three yeah. years of age it was nothing got like, to do with me yeah. right yes. but that was the mentality that Scars, I had yeah. 
when Joe Canning stood over at last and I, when I said I asked some of the players afterwards they actually said oh do you know what that, that, that um, came through my mind as well and I firmly believe if that ball did drop into the back of the net three of us I don't think we'd be sitting here now yeah. Yeah. I do I, I think but it was no, that there big. are moments like that aren't yeah. there mm. and uh, like I know you can put it down to luck but there, there is also a, 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 like a, something that needs to happen someone to kind of go no more like I, I, I'll never forget it in our time it was John Kelly a brilliant uh, centre and winger with us but mm. We got there, we were knocking on the door, journeyman for too long, and he was there. It ends today in a team meeting. And I promise you, it was over before we even went on the pitch. We, we I knew we were going to win because someone that you trust and respect and know that he was going And actually, in that game, we, we played uh, against Baritz, and he made the first error. And we went behind the post, and never forget it, and everyone's looking at their boots, and he was there. That's me, lads. Hundred percent my fault. I got that wrong. Don't worry. Like I know what I'm doing on my defensive. And it won't, won't happen again. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it just put everyone at ease. It was like the the balls to put your hands up to own the error. You know what I mean? That wouldn't normally happen. It was kind of blaming it off on someone else. But it was years. It was years of we can do this, and ah, oh, nobody rates us. But like, it, it's funny you touched on it earlier about about you know where does where does that confidence come from? You, you only have potential until you do it. And to do it then, like I remember against Kilkenny, for me it was Kilkenny in 18 and it was Tom scoring the point to, to put us ahead. To me that was cathartic. It was like Kilkenny were always the obstacle. They were always the team that we couldn't get over. And, you know, we had great culture, super dressing room, right? And for me it was always, it was all potential in 18. Like it was down the line this is going to be a super team, right? I, I thought, you know, we're going to make strides here but but it'll be It'd be too late for me. But that that game against Kilkenny, it was just a well of fellas, exactly like you like you said, you know, we're not going to be near, we're not gonna be near these anymore. We're we're gonna do it. And it took something like that because it was it was immense. So Tom collected on the 45, our own our own side of the field, sold it up the field and off his right. He has a right side, would you believe, right? <laughs> Tom Morrissey can hit off his right. <laughs> off his right. <laughs> and he put it over the bar. And I was like, this is it. I was like, because yeah. I'd been on so many teams that had that had just said, had said seen black and amber and said, you know what? We're not, we're not good enough. Mm. So it just, it, 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 yeah, you can have good culture. And you, you can have say, oh, I believe, I believe, and we're good enough. But until you do it, yeah. you've never done it. And, and it's, it's amazing the, the, the switch. Yeah, but Seamus, there's also a balance in the squad as well, and that's what kind of good managers and leaders can do to have someone young like Tom to come in. Like in that moment, Tom, you've no fear there, do you? Like you're just doing what you do because you know you're around the senior, senior leadership group that back you to the hilt to perform. Yeah, no, 100%. You know, probably there was a young cohort or maybe of us that came in um, and we had a bit of success at under 21 and maybe just, yeah, didn't really have that fear. Maybe just Used had to that. winning. Yeah. yeah, just had that belief of winning. Um, you know, we had played Kilkenny teams, you know, Cork teams, Tip teams, I suppose that will be known as the traditional hurling teams when we were growing up there, there to the names you'd hear and usually the counties you'd see winning Lee McCarthy's. Um, but we were used to not just competing with those teams at underage, maybe beating them as well and winning trophies ourselves. So, yeah, there was never really a, a fear there once even making that step up to senior that we couldn't win. Um, that was always my mentality. I think uh, Shane, you slagged me. All right, I never that I, I couldn't say a sentence without the word winning it. I think <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely though. But, it's uh, great to have it. Yeah, it was just uh, that was my philosophy, and the reason why I played was was to win. It yeah. wasn't really for anything else. Obviously, enjoyment, but you know, my first and formal focus was that I want to win. Like. Shane, that's what you're at now at the moment, aren't you? You're probably trying to identify and put the characteristics in place with a young group. You know what I mean? With the group you're involved with now at the moment. So that when they step up to those moments, that's the new norm in Limerick. Yeah, with the Limerick Miners, yeah. Um, that's it. And like, I suppose I look back at it and, uh, you know, I, you know, Limerick was very good to me and a lot of people in Limerick were good to me. And, um, you know, when the opportunity came, you know, yeah, glad, glad to do it. Um, no idea where we'll end up, but... You know, I think what's important is that I won't say in three or four years' time the Limerick team will be unrecognisable, but it'll definitely be a lot different, right? That that that's that's for sure. Um, what we have to try and ensure in Limerick is that we're not going to win an All Ireland every year. 
right? Um, but we can I go. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, it's just oh, looking pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, Seamus is well out of it. Very open with the story. Story, exactly. We never lose. <laughs> but I, I, I think what's important is that we don't go forty-five years without winning one. You know, that if you were to when 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 this when when John goes or Paul and the manager team go and the, you know a number of players retire and move on or whatever, we just can't go forty-five years again. So what I suppose and, and the lads that are with me are just trying to do is just breed a good culture into the sixteen and seventeen year olds that in three or four years time that they uh, have a you know understand what it takes or you know try and show them what it takes and, and give an understanding and that they just fall in and and try just carry the the baton that's going to be handed over and that's essentially what we're trying to do in Limerick is just you know ensure that there is the next the next train of people coming and um, yeah it's very enjoyable What is that though? What are the characteristics that John puts in place? You know what what is the point of different I just go back to our own group like Declan Kidney was honest you know what I mean and, and that dripped from him so it dripped to all of us honesty of effort work rate it came out and stuff like that what, what is it with John and, and the management team that's different than what's been there before what's different like there's no mould like I think that's the key like there's no mould there's no you, you, you're, I think you can be yourself I think there's so many different characters in there and they're allowed to be themselves and they're allowed to hurl the way they're and like I would say Paul Canark is very good at that hurl the way you hurl within the framework but the framework isn't a straitjacket like I, I think then when you're looking for characteristics yeah. then you're talking about you know as you know I definitely saw it you know the bond was there because of the honesty in the groups honesty is key yeah. accountability like you, you don't ask anybody to do something you're not going to do yourself but I think I think it, it's key from from a leadership point of view that uh, that guys are, are able to do themselves like you know, there's no there's no formulaic approach yeah Seamus I think it's the greatest thing we're seeing in sports at the moment that people are allowed to reflect themselves a little bit like and Tom not being harsh but if you walked into our dressing room with that hair back in the day <laughs> you know what I mean there's no way you're going over the pitch with our dressing room in 2018 at this <laughs> yeah. I got a, a bit of a slate as well <laughs> but, but that that point Seamus is making that, that for you to totally feel that all I have to do here is go out and give the best version of me yeah, no, 100%. And I do think it's probably, it's kind of going back to Irish culture as well. It probably just isn't allowed that you can kind of be something a bit different. You're kind of expected to be something. But um, yeah, and why we probably like the American sports so much because you actually see they're not just players and athletes. They're, they're expressive, they're, yeah. They're entertainers as well, which is, I know that's my pull towards the American sports. But uh, yeah, no, it's just... Uh, Forget the question, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so hair. Yeah, hair. I was making the point you have stunning hair. <laughs> That's all I heard. <laughs> Let's look into it in terms of, you know, all the cultural sides of it, lads. Because you mentioned that there, one could be seen as enough. You know that, how do you keep it on? How do you, how do you keep day in, day out? And, and the biggest thing I found is that hunger. You know, in Irish, we don't like to be number one. We don't like to... Be, the underdog is a lovely place for us to sit. But Limerick's a little bit different, isn't it? Especially what they've done over the last wild chain. It is, yeah. And I think, like, the underdog is great. But then when you like when you win one, and then I would say that what happened in 2019... Not what happened, but losing the semi-final. And, and that was definitely a massive, I would say, turning point, even though you were all ready after winning one. Uh, like, the COVID year was 2020. Um, and, and then all of a sudden then things just start to build and then you realise okay we're at the top here and I actually think it's nearly more of a buzz trying to make sure that nobody gets to the top rather than you trying to pass somebody out if that makes sense so you talk about the underdog you're, you're, you're admitting okay we may not be as good here we'll give it everything to try and beat him whereas now you're saying we are at the top here and there's no way we're allowing anybody else to, 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 to surpass us and I just think that's where they're at now. And I, there's, I, like people want to know, like you go anywhere, especially maybe, maybe not so much with, with the lads that are still, uh, Tom that's still playing, but like people want to know what is Paul Canork doing? They want to know what John Kiley is like. They want to know the secret. Like, you know, whereas that was, and I think, I think from a, from a camp viewpoint, I think there's a great buzz in that, in that nobody knows anything. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the greatest, the, the greatest thing ever. Uh, yeah. And that's why I think that you can really strive to keep on being successful is that, like if you win one and you win two and then you lose, like I'm not, I know Tom might not to hear this like, but I think after this year, win or lose, I think next year, you know, of course you want to go six, but I think when you, when you get to five, if you get to five, five is done. If you don't get to five, you're nearly back to the start. I just think they know there's something there that's building now and that that's why bit by bit by bit, everybody understands 
the achievement it will be if you do get there. And if you don't get there, then what I want to what's left to achieve. It's not so much about, like the age profile of the group is still quite good, but it's nearly like I, I always use the terminology of the cars. If you're driving a 2020 car or a 2010 car, it doesn't really matter because if the 2020 car is on the road for hours upon end every day, but the 2020 is only tip or the 2010 is only tipping around the place, it'll actually stay going for longer. So it's not the age group of the Limerick team; it's the mileage and the success that they've, that they've had. Um, so really, I, that's why I think that the the, the big achievement is to try to get to that. But you'd that see that from a management point of view, and, and it just had to me about John and his place in that, in in kind of juggling all of it, so that he's looking at the mileage, he's looking at motivation, he's looking at players and the ruthless side of it, lads. So who do you shed? Who's no. well? I, I think he's in a lucky he's in a in a lucky situation now where like you know the Munster League that's currently being played, the league that's coming up. Like you, you, when you don't know what you have or when you have to have a look at what's there, you got to play these people in, in the games to see understand what's there. John is in a situation now where he knows who will be where and when he has to have them there. If that makes sense. So like you know you're not going to see. Uh, you're not going to see 15 starters play the league play the most like they just need to be ready for one thing and one thing only whereas take the Corks of the world or the, the Dublins of the world or, or the Tipperary's who are in the rebuilding phase if you want to call it their managers have got to see them players that are going to be playing championship yeah. so like while mileage is a big thing a lot of these lads aren't going to be seeing grass until March, April, and then into the championship. But mm-hmm. they've earned that right in ways. They've earned it right. yeah. It's a luxury that they've earned, yeah. Because like you, you, you don't, you can't plan with unknown material. Mm. So like you, if you're trying to find a balance of this works here, this doesn't work there, you have to play players in different positions. You try, you have to try things at this time of year. A lot of time, you know, there's a luxury in Limerick now. You're just trying to find. Listen, you're trying to find guys who can compete for positions. Yeah. Uh, you you know that the game plan isn't going to change. The style of play isn't going to change. The the I say even like the role of the wing forward isn't going to change. It's just that have we got talent to to challenge the guys who are there? But with that, and you've got to be very very important. If Tom knows that he's going to be playing through hell or high water, we're under pressure. Yeah, and that's what John is bringing. That is that you can't just when, I, when I'm saying that he knows what he has and that some lads won't see grass. At, at no stage can anybody become uncomfortable. And people might listen in and say, but should we all know that if Sean Finn is fit, he's going to be playing corner back, or if Tom is fit, like. If somebody's not going well, they need to be dropped. Yeah. And to, and to have that, you need to have competition. Yeah. So you cannot, it's not as simple as we have our one to maybe 15 or 14 and there's only one up for grabs. If people know that in January, they know they're under pressure. And that, you ask about John, that's what he's very good at. But that's honesty, isn't it? He, like him being able to kind of come to you and say, you, you're underperforming and give you the reasons and he to will. work on. Yeah, I, exactly. But I, I, I've always felt people mightn't see it. But in a sporting environment, you really appreciate that. You appreciate that honest but, but conversation. We've all, I think we've all experienced that, like as players. Yeah. So is is you've you've it's it's cliche to say that the people playing best get picked until you see that in action. You don't. Like, it's hard to trust yeah. it because. It, and I've been part of loads of setups where that's just not true. Like that that there there's guys that play one way or the other. And that's that's not a that's not a setup that yeah. that is that is set up for success. It's not. Or when you're being left out, you get you. Oh, you get sour. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, you have to balance. You, and you have to balance the. You have to balance the, the panel from one to thirty, not yeah. to one fifteen. Like yeah. And that's what probably you have at the moment. It seems like an incredible group to be around, Tom. Yeah, no, it is, and there is, as Shane said, there is huge competition there. Um, and I think you can see that just like it's not just words. You know, we have been hit with injuries. You know, the last few years, like. You know, whether it was Deck last year for the final, it was Keno the year before and Pete. Um, we missed Sean again. Finn this year. Um, you know, so the, the depth of the squad has always been challenged and we've always had, you know, people who mightn't have been starting but able to step up. And then you need someone to fill their shoes to maybe come on as the impact sub, you know. So, and there's been, it's been seamless. Yeah. And the reason it's seamless is because there is genuine competition and very little between the players there. How do you balance that with being friendly with someone? You know what I mean? Having a brother, but also helping them out to maybe take your shirt. You know, it, it is always, I always found that you've the best environments if you have that. If you've two lads that are quite tight, but they, when it comes to one shirt, they will take their heads clean off each other. Yeah, there's, there's no real like balancing it. It's kind of like what what's away from it. It's like anything like, you know, when you go and play club championship against the, all these lads that you're playing with Limerick with as well, you know. What happens on the pitch is on the pitch, you know. Um, off it is off it. You can still be great pals off it. Um, but yeah, you you have to go hammer and tongs at it. And, you know, it's a case of, 
you know, let the best man win, I suppose, really. Like, you know, it's up to John and Paul to, to decide who plays. You know, you both can only go out and try your best. Tom, you told us how busy your schedule is before, and we've chatted to Lee Chin, JJ before in previous podcasts about it. But we were used to a dressing room that might have tradesmen. Has that changed even in your dressing room now? What's the majority of people do within your dressing room? Yeah, it has changed. You 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 wouldn't see that much trades people, I suppose, in a in an inter county dressing room. But uh, yeah, I don't know if that's a reflection on the demand specifically that inter county. Maybe I know it has increased, but uh, I don't maybe think that is the reason why you see less trades people. I think it's just this was a sign of the evolving economy Ireland has had over the last twenty years. You know, ten years as such. You know, uh, with the universities, with so as the big multinationals that have come in, you know, there's there's huge opportunity for people now to go to third, get third level education under their belt. You know, and I suppose maybe industries that weren't there, you know, 20 years ago are there now, whether it be, you know, IT or big pharmaceutical companies. And I think maybe that's possibly a reason you see, you just see less trades people, I think, around Ireland in general. And, you know, the knock on effect is that you're going to see less people then in, in a dressing room then as well that do do a trade. When it comes to that, though, everyone likes to balance probably maybe exercise or training we, it, like you're doing it at the top level. But would you have tips for someone, say, working a trade that is physically active every day? How do you organize yourself? How do you fit in those little, um, yeah. you know, windows? Yeah, I suppose, as, as you say, if you're going to be busy and you're you're going to be, you know, working and trying to be involved in a team, um, and, and you want to keep up, whether it's fitness or, you know, just by yourself or it is part of a team. I think it's important just, I suppose, be organised is, is the number one thing. Um, I know you're slagging me early about my oats and the lunchbox yeah. and going around. But, you know, if it does take 15, 20 minutes at the end of the day to, you know, get prepared or, you know, maybe an hour on a, on a Sunday to, to food prep and have your lunches and dinners ready, you might be eating a lot of the same things, but you, you just got to be, so it's make peace with that and be OK with that. At least, you know, you're getting, you know, healthy food into you. Um, then the other side of it is just to make sure, I suppose, that you, you have a bit of a schedule put in place of when you're actually going to exercise, when you say, as you say, you get those windows that, you know, you, you specifically put aside time to exercise and that you're disciplined and actually, you know, because we're not motivated every day of the, the week either that, you know, when you put away that hour, hour and a half to exercise and you, you mightn't be in the mood of it on a Tuesday after work that you're disciplined and you actually go and do it because you, you'll be, be the better for it. Would you do that, Tom? Would you sit down, say, of a Sunday evening and meal prep and also kind of look at your week and say, OK, this is my windows for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or whatever it is? Yeah, I suppose we were talking about the support systems that you might have around uh, you as well. You know, I'm, Elaine's very good to me in that regard with the meal prep. Um, I do a small bit myself uh, if I'm caught during the week because she works up in Dublin. But, uh, you know, she's very good to me in that way in it, with, with the meals. But, yeah, regards time management, it, you know, you do kind of, have to be fairly focused. I've done exams the last few years. I've been working inside Nernst and Young and, you know, trying to, I suppose, play with Limerick as well and, and manage time for friends and, and Elaine as well. It does take, you have to, to make sure that you know what you're doing at each time and that you can give whatever you're doing that focus as well. You know, I know I'm working between nine to five and that's, you know, some evenings, that's all. I'm not going to have time to do overtime if there's something important. So you need to be focused and efficient during that time. And then it's same with training that, you know, this is my hour and a half for training. You're fully focused for it and you're given that your full attention. Um, so, yeah, just just to be organized and manage your time efficiently that way. That's how you find that, Jim, as I go to you first. But it, like that when it, it's funny when you come away from it and you're not fueling like you'd like or you're maybe not training like you'd like. And, and then. I used to always, I used to slag that I couldn't understand why people weren't would whinge about not being fit, and then you realise the vigours of the real world. Yeah, no one yeah. knows it better than you. Three kids in the house. Five well, kids. I, I, five. five. Kids. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, I was three. <laughs> I was gonna, the, the twins are on top of three. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, he's, I, about, he's about to purchase uh, a mini bus. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, retired, I retired. I retired to to to, to raise kids, but yeah. it's a uh, no. The, it's you just have to be organised. Like it's the reality. It's very funny. I was working with the. You know, very much involved with the the players' association, the, the Gaelic Players Association. And there was always surveys every year about uh, about let's say uh, like hurlers, footballers. Are you good at time management? And like it was overwhelming. You're talking about eighty, eighty five percent. No, horrible at time management. Really, really bad. But then the average population would look at the the Tom Chain when we were doing it. How did you manage to do all this? Phenomenal time managers. Like it's incredible. 
Uh, but for me, yeah, morning, if, if I don't get exercise done in the morning before it all, before the whole thing starts, before the whole day starts, it's it's, it's very hard to get it in. And like, you know, the, the reality is that uh, uh, my schedule is not my own now anymore. Like it's the, the reality is and um, I, I'm going to be coaching the under 10 Camogie team this year. It's going to be fairly good. <laughs> 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 listen, you know, John Kiley, John Kiley has his bit. I have my bit. He has That's to watch me. his I'm, back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so but no, with the Cork on under 10s and all, uh, when I go back, Jenny's there, how'd you get on? Was there great? I had seven pairs of laces. <laughs> 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 Two lads had a chat in the corner and <laughs> someone holding up a worm and everyone <laughs> stops swirling. You're like, cool. brilliant. Yeah, so like, that's like, the organization. If you've got a window to do it, thank God. Like I was talking to Tom about, I used to struggle to put weight on and yeah. keep muscle mass. Yeah, okay. And I was like, I was saying to Tom, surely no, you're 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 eating to keep it on. He goes, Shams, I'm trying to lose it. And I'm like, <laughs> so oh, yeah. you know, it, it's different for every every person, but you know. I I I still play a bit with the club. Thank God for a bit of bit of social element of it. It's great to still be around. Incredible, yeah. eighteen year olds, nineteen yeah. year olds. Uh, but it is good for yeah. your soul to be around that age yeah, group, absolutely. isn't it? Asher, I was playing minor for Limerick before a couple of lads were born, and they and they were like. They, they just cannot comprehend it. They, <laughs> and I didn't even, you know, I, I play up to it. I, yeah, I, yeah, throw, yeah, I start throwing in, oh, do you remember that? Remember that VCR? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Remember when we made CDs and the lads are like, what are CDs? What? But, no, so like, but just to Tom's point, I love that organization. Like, and, and as, as a high performance athlete it is entirely about that. Yeah. You you take the steps to prepare yourself for it. But like then if you want to stay active, like, you know, I, I love the old adventure races, bit of, uh, looking to get into a bit of triathlon, stuff that'll fuel the, the part of me that that craves a bit of competition, exercise, fitness. And you can do all these things, but, you know, the knowledge I've gained on nutrition and stuff like that will really help me from, from my time being. Yeah, of course, it, it, yeah. It, it's, it's part of. Shane, and then on top of that, I personally, myself, I always like to have a training partner. I find it good to take away, like Tom's saying there, if I say myself and Shane are going to catch up and we're going to train at this time, I find it handy for helping me to get it done. The biggest problem I had is uh, like the only, like, uh, you know, fitness and me always throughout all my life was probably the, the greatest challenge. And the one thing I always had to do to stay fit was was run. You know, nothing, nothing else really done it for me. And I can't or couldn't run for the last three or four years. So that does make it a lot more harder. Uh, but it's just then diet and uh, just doing whatever I can to try and, and be their own first baby boy five weeks ago now. So that all, also brings uh, brings new element to it as well. But overall, listen, I just have to try to find a way because what I did do before, I can't do now. But uh, I'm happy enough where I'm at. Yeah. Shane, we'll go to you. Um, an awful lot going on for you now with the punditry and helping out and at home, as you just mentioned. Congratulations. That is great news. It is. Being a dad is something special, isn't it? But you're also uh, doing a bit with Cleanness Foundation. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, a national charity based in Limerick uh, got to know Brendan and Terry Ring um, through a good, good friend of mine, Kevin Downs, who's working for, for Brendan's business in Cube. Uh, I sent their, their charity that, that you know, give money to families who's got a seriously sick child. It's as simple as that. There are very, very few, if any, charities out there that literally give money to families just to say, look after, get the heat at home, pay for the car park and bills, um, you know, traveling over and back. It doesn't really, you know, it's not for, they don't cover medical costs or anything like that where most, you know, other people do. Um, I mean, I've called to families, what we used to do before COVID is actually give call to houses and give the check to people so that they could put a face behind the check rather than maybe just get a check landed in the front door because they have to apply for it. And I've called to, to houses where I've walked in, they don't know me from Adam. I'm saying I'm Shane, I'm from Cleaners. Um, you know, there's a number of volunteers that do it. And I've given people money over a kitchen table to with their response was bawling crying. They said, Shane, I, I, we can't afford to put oil into the tank. I've had to give up my job to cater for for a child that's um, that's very very sick. And um, so, listen, it's 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 a sad, you know, it's a sad charity. You get four hundred families every year. Uh, get, their, their children get diagnosed with a seriously sick illness. Um, so it's uh, it's tough, but we we enjoy what we do and we work hard at it. And uh, I know there's a lot of families out there that are have great gratitude for for the support that we give them. Yeah, it sounds incredible. What can people do to help or find out more if they'd like to? I, it, it, all I would say is that they're they are so so professional. No matter what you're involved in, you're always going to talk talk it up, aren't of you? Uh, it, you know, it's it's all the one to me. You know, I would the only advice I give people is even just check clean as that. I it's very, very simple uh, what to do. I know Tom has done work, Seamus has done work. Um, it's just it's just a fantastic yeah, organisation. Amazing group. It is lovely to have something like that outside your life to make you appreciate stuff, isn't it? Yeah, no, perspective uh, on, yeah. on everything. Like looking for all Ireland's is class. Uh, it's brilliant. But uh, when you, Shane, walking into houses and the effect that that actually brings us, yeah. that's, that's incredible stuff. 
that's a beautiful thing about sport as well, though. It kind of, I feel it rounds people off a little bit. There's a compassion to think of others mm. um, because you do to give it back. The, yeah. yeah, to do it day in, day out. Tom, I'll come to you for young players, uh, boys and girls listening in. You know, they'll look at you togging out every time. What advice would you have to younger boys and girls who'd someday love to live your dream out? Yeah, I suppose one thing I think when when you're a kid, you might come compare yourself to maybe who's the best and things like that and it might uh, disincentivize you just to stay practicing or something I'd say look everyone goes at their own pace so just just stay practicing don't compare and just focus on just improving yourself and you know I think on improving yourself the best advice I can give is you know make sure you practice the things you're bad at I think I know when I look back to when I was a kid you know we used I used to love going taking freeze or striking off my right hand side or you know, doing the things because I was good at that. You know, it takes maybe your father or a coach to say, OK, you've kind of you're good at that, but start striking off your left. And it's just about forcing yourself to maybe practice those skills that you're not good at to make yourself maybe improve and be that maybe all round player. Yeah. Seamus, what for you? The but, but that's it. There's so many examples of of if you're passionate about something and you stick at it, it's the people who have the actual the desire mentally you know, to, to pursue a dream to the end, they're normally the ones who actually have the greatest impact at the end. Like there's so many examples of, of like even Aaron Galan, current earlier of the year, really burst onto it as a, a, our, our squad as a, as a 19 year old, you know, yeah. really broke through all preconceived notions that people had for him later in in, in, in his, I suppose, uh, rather than being a, an underage superstar. So there's loads of examples, there's tons of them, of of people, Brian Lohan and Claire, like there's there's tons of them that just, you know, they had a dream, they they were passionate about it, they pursued it, and when others fell away, they were there. Because that happens an awful lot probably nowadays compared to before. There's so much selection process, you're probably dealing with it the whole time, but maybe you don't make it at a younger age, but that isn't a reflection whether you can go out at the... Uh, at, at the end, I think for me, it was always I, I, I always forget. Uh, remember uh, Munster 20s and I didn't get picked. And I remember all the guys uh, di didn't get picked, got the bus bound to Cork and everyone was going to stop and get a few cans. And I remember I remember that was actually a sliding doors moment. It's like, do I head off here and get a few cans with the lads or do I go after it? And I, I, I'm glad of that moment that I stuck it out, that I kind of stayed in the fight a little bit. What about for you, Shane? Anything that you'd say to a younger player coming through? Because you're dealing with them now. You're probably seeing all the, the things they have to put up with. The this is it, yeah. And I've you know had to make hard phone calls to parents because you can't contact kids because they're under 18 and tell them that their little Johnny is not going to be selected this year. And my parting message to anyone is that I just would love nothing more than for you to prove me wrong and hope that he can just keep the head down now and come back at another time. And even outside of Harlan, to be honest, Dunica, I, I went down a different road to the majority. I never went to college. I was no good at school. I enjoyed the crack uh, and I just found my own path and some people have been put under pressure at home you have to go to college you have to do that if that's what it's, if that's for you work away and if it's not there's plenty of opportunities out there I think once you're good mannered and you have a bit of respect you'll go a long way in life Yeah, great advice great advice I, Tom I won't come to you on this but lads I'm going to do a T five in rows at on for Limerick 1000% the, the only team to stop them done is Waterford we leave it there for the nice That's thank you so much. Honestly, really appreciate you taking the time to chat to us today on Under Construction. Limerick do something special. I've been lucky enough to be around the place, but how you reflect um, your county and where you're from, you should be so, so proud. It's the envy of every other county and we're so glad to chat to you today. And Tom, we wish you continued success. Thanks Same lads, much. best of luck with everything you take on. It was a joy chatting to you. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Welcome back to Under Construction. It is time for our supplier's corner, and that means our hero Patrick is back in to bail me out. <laughs> How are we doing, everyone? All good? All great. All good, yeah, great. Yes. We're delighted in our supplier's corner today to chat to Chrome Paint and to tell us a little bit about it. We're delighted to be joined by Clark Blair and Ken Kinsella. Lads, thanks so much for joining us. Delighted thanks for here. having us. Yeah. Clark, I'll go to you uh, first. You might give us a brief history on Chrome Paint. Of course, we all know what we see on the shelf and what we're used to using, but just on the company itself. Okay, okay. Thanks, Donica. Um, just to give you a little bit of a background, um, Crown Paints has been 
uh, protecting Irish homes for the last 100 years almost. It actually started off uh, just around the corner from here in Cardiff Lane where we had a factory. Um, and over years, the, the, the Crown brand has accumulated a number of other brands such as Sadlin and Santex and McPherson's as well. Uh, we're now owned by uh, a, a company called Hempel. And that, uh, that company has one um, shareholder, which is the Hempel Foundation. It's a global company, so it's, it's quite a, a, lar a large organization. And the unique thing about um, the way that we operate is that because we've got a foundation, uh, basically everything that we generate in terms of revenue, et cetera, go back into the Hempel Foundation. And they've got three drivers, uh, and it's really part of our culture uh, and the way that we operate. Those three drivers are to support um, education in the third world. So um, by 2030, we are aiming to um, support over a million children in the third world um, who wouldn't normally get the chance and the opportunity for education. Uh, and then the, the second driver is biodiversity and protecting areas of the, the planet that are under threat, etc. Uh, and the uh, the third part is sustainability. Sustainability is uh, is in the core attributes of everything that we actually do. Obviously, the whole world is changing, yeah. so uh, we want to be a sustainable leader um, uh, in our sector, and and that's what we're we're driving towards. For example, by twenty twenty five, we will be completely carbon neutral as a wow. company. So that's a real standout. Twenty twenty five. Twenty twenty five. Wow. It's amazing goal to have, Ken, especially when it's that close. Yeah, fantastic. And, and you know, as we meet suppliers right across the island of Ireland, sustainability is becoming much more important. It's coming very, very, people have obligations to make going forward. And the fact that we use plastic that's recyclable in all our packaging, it's a very good positive story to help our suppliers in terms of what they, they, can, they can trust a supplier that is, um, you know, covering sustainability goals right across the piece. Hempel drive it and we follow in suit. So every product that we launch across the market, first and foremost, has to be sustainable in a, in a packaging context. And then we work from there in terms of size formatting and how we launch it into the market. You must be way ahead of 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 everyone else. 2025, as Donner says, is, is just so yeah. close. Like yeah. it's next year. It is, um, it is. But also the fact that the foundation and, and everything you, you make goes into a foundation that actually puts everything back, that that puts your DNA as completely sustainable. Yeah, I, 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 it is. Uh, it's with a lot of pride that we talk about this, you know, because we know it's very unique in the in the, in, in the market. Um, I know one or two other foundations, like Carlsberg, for example, mm. is a foundation. We do this uh, in order to, to support... Um, the foundation. We don't use the foundation in order to support our sales, if that makes sense. And that's in our culture. Um, the the other piece of it is yes, there's the global context, but we've we've just launched another um, uh, social responsibility program ourselves called Project Possible, and that's getting to the local areas. Um, for example, Ireland, uh, where we're coordinating community work, education. We've sponsored World Skills for I think it's the fourth decade. So, uh, uh, you know, that, that has, has to be very important for us. Obviously, we want the new trades people coming into the, uh, into the business as well. And obviously, charity work that's, that's going along with that project possible element of it. So, uh, you, you probably don't shout it from the rooftops nearly enough, to be honest yeah. with you. you know, uh, Sometimes we're, we're, yeah. we're our own worst enemy whenever we do that. And as I say, it's not, we do it because it's in our core. We don't do it to sell paint. And I think there's maybe a mismatch. Yeah. It's so typically Irish. <laughs> you know what I mean? To be doing re really well, leading yeah. the way and saying, shh, tell no one about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. 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 So, so what's new? What have you got new? And now we're on a patch. Yeah. <laughs> Get ahead of the game. Yeah. Yeah. On a roll. Yeah. On a roll. <laughs> so what, what we wanted to actually talk about today was... Uh, was a, a product called Saddle and Super Deck. Okay, so you, you mentioned about um, you know people understanding what what product is the right thing for whatever substrate that they're using. Um, I, I think Saddle and Super Deck is is one of the most unique products that actually is actually out there because you can use it everywhere, uh, everywhere apart from floors. Um, and Donica, I've I brought in a couple of props okay, with me, okay, okay, that I really want to show off to you. Yeah, yeah. So um, Saddle and Super Deck, yes, it is the Saddle and brand name. People know, people trust it. Um, and, you know, we, we talked about those planters, we talked about fences, et cetera, and, and even garden rooms, et cetera, that people are using those bolder colors. Um, our, our Saddle and Super Deck can be used um, in all those places, and there's thousands of colors to choose from, okay? So per, we, we believe color is incredibly personal. Um, uh, and you will have the opportunity to pick the color that you 
want exactly. Um, so whenever it comes to saddle and super deck, um, it, it's incredible durability is is second to none. It's about 10 years uh, durability that you would expect it to last, which is excellent. What makes it unique is that it will go on any any surface, but it, and it won't flake and it won't crease and it won't peel, etc. Okay, so I just want to demonstrate a couple of things for you. Just okay, to, very good. Just to highlight. Well up for a demonstration. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not going to throw the ball to him. Glad we're standing beside each other. I'm glad you brought the green ball. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, we, we, we had our uh, our product trainer um, do these up for us, so I apologize in advance whenever okay. I show you the other ones. Yes. So he said this was a Connacht green. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I, but we'll go for Ireland I'd green for that one. Yeah, 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 it okay. looks well. It looks yeah. really good. Looks so, really good. That, so that's the paint on that surface. That's the paint. So there's two coats on that rugby ball just to highlight the fact that it'll go on the absolutely any surface and it I will not a stunning colour for a rugby ball but, now uh, it might get lost on the grass yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that could make for a better yeah. game exactly exactly yeah. but there's no, there's no sign of a cracking None. or nothing no, which no. no. is extraordinary yeah, it actually it, looks like the ball so is yeah. that oil based or water based it's, it's, a, it's a water based um, it's water based environmentally product. friendly as well absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I'm feeding absolutely. the, feeding the to you yeah 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 it's self priming you don't need an undercoat with yeah. it, you can apply it so directly. No undercoat. No, no undercoat I, required. I, I daily three coats. There's only two coats onto that on on the bare product. Okay, or on the on the bare uh, substrate. Um, if it's been painted before, you're looking one to two coats. Give you an example. Now I I, I painted my fence. Oh, it must have been about four or five years ago uh, in this lovely blue colour. Sorry, okay. it, was a, it was a lens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Come on, no wonder you need to change yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I, I, I painted it a, a number of years ago. Now, whatever happened during that particular time, the weather changed, okay? So I managed only to get one coat onto it. And of course, whatever happened during the day and the following days, I never got an opportunity to put two coats on it or three coats onto it. Now, I'm not advising that everybody does it, but just to show the durability and how good the product is, I've had one coat on my fence for the last last uh, four or five years and it looks as good as new so but another prop for you you're going to love this one okay oh, okay here comes <laughs> trouble <laughs> yeah Fair. if this is a pair of red jocks I'm out <laughs> <laughs> I love it okay you can probably so, use a fresh pair at this point <laughs> <laughs> the ones so, those ones are too tight nowadays uh, our product trainer I told him to do uh, Monster Red yeah he yeah said, okay I, I it's too popular I, yeah. <laughs> we've not left it's sold out <laughs> he was allergic to it. <laughs> so just feel how flexible that is that will not that will not That's crack cool. Coating on the glove. Coating yep. on the glove. Yeah. Uh, wow. And so you can imagine any type of timber uh, will flex during the winter and summertime, etc. So it has to be have that uh, that durability. That's and incredible. It, the, the, there's a specialist uh, elastomeric product properties that are put into that, so the product itself will stretch. Now, just to reinforce it, I have a little bit of tin foil here. No as way. Well. Yeah, yeah, a bit of tin foil. So there's two coats on this. Wow, yeah. what a product! Uh, yeah. and, and and as I mentioned before, we we can uh, we can mix this into any color under the sun, so we can make sure that uh, you, you, the choice. So it's mixed color, at point of sale. It is a mixed at point yeah. of sale. There's a there's a small ready mix range, and then there's a full bases range, which allows you any color. Any yeah. colour at all that you like. You can oh. copy a fabric, you can bring in a Munster jersey and get the Munster jersey on it. This exact same yeah. colour. It can cover any colour. Limited yeah. market though. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's big down uh, Munster, isn't it? it. <laughs> exactly. It's nothing but red. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, for the summer seasons, we split off. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that, that's a key key product that we wanted to highlight today. We've also just launched a product called Wet Wood Decking Stain, okay, which obviously living in Ireland, we get the all little bit of yeah. uh, rain. Um, th this product uh, is designed that if it's been raining, for example, all you need to do is to brush off the excess water and you can uh, you can stain your decking um, wow. and uh, and protect it. Norm normal products, you have to let the, yeah. the timber dry, etc. Um, so that that's brand new into the marketplace as well, which is uh, which is going very well. But that's it. It's making it simple. I, I not been harsh, but I tried to paint our kitchen table and made a dog's dinner of it. And yeah. if you know, there's one. Page, you know, yeah, like just absolutely. Things, yeah, things. No, yeah. no, I'm not covering for my own stupidity, <laughs> but I'm trying to make an attempt for it. Yeah. So you mentioned your support of world skills um, mm -hmm. earlier. So. Obviously, you know we've 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 a massive shortage of skills in this country, and 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 it's a, an ongoing issue for us. Um, so so organizations like World Skills obviously help grow that they're a non non for profit organization, and 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 very much promote skills across the world. So so we've World Skills in Leon is in September next year. Will we have some Irish painters going down there? Uh, I believe so. I believe so. 
Um, but yeah, it, it is fabulous to be involved in that in that organisation. And, and um, yeah, it really is the lifeblood. Obviously, we need the next generation mm. coming through. And and it it's uh, you could even see it from uh, the World Skills back in September time. You know, uh, and how much energy there is around all those people that were involved in it to try and 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 bring the trades mm. people through. Um, uh, you know, so, some of the candidates that we had in September, the, the skill set was mm. superb, wow. absolutely brilliant, you know, and, and you can see there's the benchmark uh, and people are getting enthusiastic and, and getting involved in it. So certainly it's, it's, it's part of something that we want to keep on driving ourselves. Yeah, so the World Skills um, competition is, is held every two years. It's a bit like the Olympics of skills. So okay. you get... 60, 65 skills all coming together and they all compete across different countries. So Amazing. we usually put a team of about 20 yes. in as yeah. a country um, yeah. and everything from carpentry to painting to tiling to plumbing, electrical, whatever. So it's it's a, it's a big gig, wow. um, but it needs needs a lot of support to, to get it. So the, the competition you were referring to earlier was the Irish competition, which yes. was held yes. in the RDS yes. last yes. Uh, September. Yeah. Um, so yeah, great, great to uh, uh, great to have uh, that. Well done, you guys. Yeah. Ken Clark, look fantastic to have you guys in oh, here. The, the news really of your, your great here, yeah. in, uh, innovations, brilliant. No monster red still. <laughs> oh, get out of it. <laughs> I have to thank you. Uh, you. You go back to a childhood memory for me, but I remember having a fight with my mom because I wanted to wear. My Liverpool chrome paints jersey yeah, for my, did you, for my uh, communion, but wasn't oh, allowed to get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> it was too far. Oh, brilliant. 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 Thanks so much, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks a lot. Yeah.